KMR, Kyle Mohan Racing. Welcome back to the channel. We got the brap, or at least we got some brap. Today we're going to be checking out and talking about this 20B block, three rotor block, which came in for studding work. Um, basically strengthening of the block where we eliminate the factory tension bolts and carefully put in with precise fitment half inch studs that will run basically in some cases completely through the block and in other positions go right through the back and into the front plate. So first off, why do we do this? So as 13Bs, 20Bs, four rotors, rotary motors in general achieve higher RPMs and higher boost levels, you have two things that start to happen. Under high boost, the rotor housings actually start to flex, try to expand outwards. You've not only got the boost and the pressure inside the block working against the aluminum components and cast iron components, which can cause fatiguing, but you've also got the RPM, which has multiple motions in effect, which can cause harmonics and loading forces in opposing directions as the rotors cycle through compression, explosion, and exhaust, causing different forces in the motor. So you have expansion under boost and under load due to compression and explosion and boost. And then you've also got the torsional loading and twisting that rotary motors suffer from um, in different applications. Although the twisting changes as you go from two rotor, three rotor, four rotor, you will always have twisting. And part of what we try to do in the rotary world to strengthen the blocks is reduce twisting and reduced expansion. Reducing the expansion helps eliminate the issues of cracking that run along your oil dowel pin galleries and within the cast iron components of the block. And similarly, by eliminating twist, you have better sealing of your water jacket to a uh, housing seal, which would be your, your, uh, your head gasket seal, essentially. And you also reduce the risk of having the block twist and crack components or lose strength in critical areas, which can cause sealing issues or failure issues um, block cracking, exploding, leaking, anything like that. So you have a twist factor going on and you have an expansion factor. And as the rotary evolution has occurred, there has been a couple different variations of strengthening blocks. All of them work. I'm not here saying uh, different styles don't work. Um, but what we found was in the end, the studying, full studying of the block lends some of the best strength um, and helps with reliability under high loads, high boost, high RPM, race conditions, extreme conditions. Um, but it's also very repeatable. Uh, a long, for a long time, dowel pinning has been done to rotary engines. And uh, that was, in some cases, using factory dowel pins or modified hardened steel dowel pins that then would be inserted with tension bolts running down through them. Um, it does work, but there were limitations. And in some cases, the castings from the factory didn't have a lot of surface material to allow for the machine work for dowel pinning. So you couldn't dowel pin every tension bolt hole in a rotary motor. Um, as where when you opt for studding, you can basically go through and stud the entire block. Let me see if I can rotate this here without messing anything up. You can run studs basically through the entire block, which allows for a lot of strength, rigidity, which in, in return equates to reliability. And you can see here, you've got a combination of studs running to the front plate, which are then threaded into the front plate, precise fitment, and studs that are directly through the block, straight through to the, uh, the front plate, through the front plate. Um, you can see here's your main studs coming straight through, and then you still have the two OEM ones 
that are associated with your dowels that were already existing in the cast iron portions of the block. And then all of the ones that are not passed through are screwed directly into the front plate. And then you've still got uh, these OEM ones that are associated with those same uh, dowel pinning that already runs through the block. So with the block rotated, you can kind of see you've got uh, multiple studs running directly to the front plate where they're actually threaded in. Um, so you're tapping and uh, remachining the front plate for precise fitment all the way down through the block. And then you've also got your straight through studs, nice precise fitment as well, that are basically tightened on both ends, clamping the block together. So not only are you pulling the block together uh, in the factory orientation, but we've also taken and gone straight through the block uh, to allow for very equalized clamping pressure and ease of uh, operation when it comes to installing, building these 20Bs because they are multi-rotor configurations. So in some cases, you do need the opportunity to remove some of these studs easily um, just for assembly and disassembly. And you can see in this particular motor, um, this is not normally the case, but we did leave the two factory large oversized uh, tension bolts and that was due to this block had already been dowel pinned on both of those locations and the factory uh, one up here that runs along your oil dowel pin rail and uh, we didn't want to undo or change what had already been done although it looked like there was fatiguing and uh, this particular motor is now going to be asked to make even more horsepower than it was before so Obviously, we could see fatiguing was already happening with what dowel pinning had been done. So it just made sense to save the block, uh, opt for full studs, add strength, so that way the block can run safely into higher boost and higher RPM levels. So again, kind of a combination. Um, generally, I would not leave these uh, factory uh, oversized tension bolts. But in this case, we did. So normally what you'd be looking at back here is 100% studs. Um, but still at this point, being about 95% studded, this is a very strong block. And in a lot of cases, because we're working with older components, sometimes we do have to work around what's already been done with motors. Um, people will probably ask, it is a street port. It is for a sand rail. So another off-road motor off-road race motor and this one will definitely be achieving over a thousand horsepower it's a pretty mean build um, so we had to get involved and basically add some strength add some reliability to this block um, in case anybody wonders we can still get factory 20b rotor housings uh, via japan so if anybody's interested in getting uh, factory 20b rotor housings they're not always available but we do have uh, availability on those right now and whether you're trying to stud uh, 13b's 20b's four rotors let us know we can do custom studs if you've got something in mind and generally we've got uh, 20b 13b stuff on the shelf to suit your horsepower needs that's what we do we try to keep rotaries alive whether they're high horsepower or low horsepower high rpm low rpm we want to see rotaries succeed. And that's a wrap.